Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa issued Edict 11 of 2019 stipulating the restructuring of the four governors' executive councils. The duration of their membership in the councils will be four years and renewable. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister also issued Edict 12 of 2019 establishing the National Committee to Combat Acquired Immunodeficiency Viral Syndrome. The National Committee will be presided by the Minister of Health and comprises the following members. Assistant Under Secretary for Public Health, Health Ministry as Vice President. Director of Public Health, Health Ministry as a member. Director of Health Promotion, Health Ministry as a member. Representative of Interior Ministry as a member. Representative of Education Ministry as a member. Representative of the Labor and Social Development Mi Ministry as a member. Representative of Information Affairs Ministry as a member. Representative of Youth and Sports Ministry as a member. Representative of Salmania Medical Complex as a member. Representative of the BDF as a member. Representative of King Hamad University Hospital as a member. Representative of the Arab Gulf University as a member. Representative of the Disease Control Directorate Health Ministry as a member and rapporteur. The committee will assume its jurisdictions according to the Implementation Code of Law 1 of 2017 regarding the protection of cases and the society against AIDS. Law 20 of 1995 regarding the establishment of the National Committee for Prevention of AIDS was rescinded as well as Edict 49 of 2013 regarding the formation of the National Committee for Prevention of AIDS as well as any provision contrary to the edict. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khaled bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met today in Washington with the U.S. Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, in the framework of the Minister's official visit to the United States. The Minister hailed the distinguished level of the historic and strategic relations between Bahrain and the U.S., which are constantly developing and flourishing at all levels. He added that this development reflects a priority given by both countries to these relations and their keenness on bolstering all means of bilateral cooperation, namely in the fields of politics, security, military, economics, trade and other fields. The minister also expressed appreciation for the role played by the U.S. in strengthening international cooperation, wishing the United States further progress and prosperity. Mike Pompeo expressed pleasure to have met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, stressing the keenness of the U.S. to enhance joint cooperation at all levels. He also expressed appreciation for Bahrain's hosting the Peace to Prosperity Workshop and its all crucial outcomes, hailing the efforts exerted by the Kingdom to establish peace and security in the region. He stressed the need to continue joint work and enhance cooperation with countries in the region at all levels to confront Iran's policies that aim to undermine stability and security in order to maintain peace and security in the region and the world. The Minister of Foreign Affairs participated in a panel discussion organized by the Atlantic Council in Washington on regional affairs with the United States Special Representative for Iran and Senior Policy Advisor to the U.S. Secretary of State Brian Hook with the framework of the Minister's official visit to the U.S. The Minister expressed appreciation to the Atlantic Council affirming his pride to join Brian Hook in the panel discussion. He shed light on the Peace of Prosperity Workshop hosted by the Kingdom which was successful in achieving its goals. The minister then stressed that Iran is a danger for peace and security in the region and the world, noting that the support of Iran to the Houthi militias in Yemen is hindering the achievement of, of a solution that ensures the restoration of peace and security in Yemen. He also reviewed the Iranian interventions in Bahrain, including supporting terrorism as well as training and harboring terrorists and establishing terrorist groups in order to stir strife and undermine the kingdom's security and stability. The minister also reiterated the kingdom's support for the steps taken by the U.S. to pressure Iran and end its ongoing interventions in the internal affairs of Arab countries. The minister pointed out the importance of keeping the GCC's march in the region on track and stressed the need for Qatar to respond to the demands of boycotting countries in a manner of transparency and seriousness. Brian Hook noted the need to confront Iran which poses a threat to the stability and security of the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs met in Washington yesterday with the U.S. National Security Advisor John Bolton within the framework of the Minister's official visit to the U.S. The Minister affirmed that the distinguished bilateral relations between Bahrain and the U.S. mirror the keenness of the two countries to prioritize these relations and embody their relentless endeavors to bolster joint cooperation at all levels. He also noted the continued efforts of the United States to establish peace and stability in the region and the world, stressing that Bahrain will remain supportive of these efforts. John Bolton praised the deep-rooted relations between the two countries and their mutual keenness on activating bilateral cooperation frameworks at all levels. He also expressed his appreciation for the Kingdom for hosting the Peace to Prosperity Workshop, a crucial step that reflects the Kingdom's role in establishing security and stability. 
He stressed that the United States will continue its efforts to confront the Iranian threats in the region and its policy of intervening in the internal affairs of the region's country, as well as supporting terrorist groups and militias and spreading chaos and violence. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs confirms that the Kingdom of Bahrain is preparing to host a maritime and air navigation security meeting in the coming period in cooperation with the United States and the Polish Republic, with the participation of more than 60 countries as one of the outcomes of the international conference in support of security and peace in the Middle East that was held in Warsaw last February. This affirms that the, this initiative comes within the framework of the role played by Bahrain to contribute to the establishment of security and stability in the region and its awareness of the dangers that threaten the region in light of Iran's practices, which pose a threat to maritime and air navigation. The ministry stresses that this meeting will provide an opportunity for consultation and exchange of visions among many countries in the world to find ways to deter the Iranian threat and in ensure freedom of navigation in the strategic region and the world. Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities held a press conference on the occasion of announcing Dulman Burial Mound site on UNESCO's World Heritage List during the meeting of the 43rd World Heritage Committee held in the Azerbaijani capital Baku in the presence of the President of BACA, Sheikh Hamay bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and members of Arab and International Diplomatic Corps. Sheikh Hamay stated that Bahrain celebrated the third Bahraini site on UNESCO's World Heritage List, adding that the cultural tourism industry is based on providing a pioneering and remarkable cultural experience for visitors through investing in civil civilizational and historical gains. She noted that Dunman Burial Mound sites will contribute to enhancing the cultural tourism infrastructure in Bahrain. BSA Director of Museums and Antiquities, Sheikh, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, stated that the stages of registering sites on the World Heritage List has extended for over 10 years, adding that the government of Bahrain supported creating the registration file and residents in areas surrounding Dulman Burial Mounds also cooperated with BSA to make this achievement. The press conference today held at the Burial Mounds Hall at the National Museum, which showcased the recent efforts of inscribing the property on the World Heritage List. We have presented uh, what uh, warranted this inscription in terms of meeting the criteria necessary for a listing. In addition to the nomination pro process that actually took place over a number of years, uh, through preparations, through studies, and finally with the positive evaluation of ICOMAS, which is the advisory body of the World Heritage Committee. This inscription testifies that this site is truly unique on a global level and we are taking this responsibility quite seriously here in Bahrain and we will maintain that protection and management measures are put in place to ensure the uh, outstanding universal value of the property is not compromised and the hall that has been recreated last year also to coincide with Bahrain hosting the World Heritage Committee actually showcases the values presented by the site through different artifacts, through different modalities of, of burial traditions uh, which cover the period of Dilman here in Bahrain. No matter how hard terrorist financers and supervisors of to incite hatred and disrupt the social fabric of Bahrain, the kingdom will always remain unified and Bahrainis of all categories will remain committed to their national loyalty and their loyalty to the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. ما سنعرضه ليس ردا على أكاذيب ودعاءات روجت لها قناة الجزيرة القطرية لأن الأكاذيب لا تستحق الرد والاهتمام. خاصة حين تأتي من جهة امتهنت التضليل والتزييف ادعاءات الفتنة والتحريض لا يمكن اعتبارها مضمونا إعلاميا إنما هي مضمون إرهابي تحريضي مثير للفتنة فضلا عن كونه مناف للواقع وضارب في الكذب والتزوير التسجيلات التي تم بثها لكل من محمد صالح علي وهشام هلال البلوشي تعود للعام 2011 وتقف وراءها مجموعة إرهابية اتهمت بحيازة الأسلحة والتخطيط لعمليات إرهابية وتم محاكمتهم عام 2004 وقد أقرت المجموعة بأنها أعدت هذه التسجيلات بما فيها من أكاذيب من أجل توظيفها إعلاميا واستخدامها كورقة ضغط بالنسبة ما عرض في قناة الجزيرة من المادة التي سربت فحبيت أوضح أن ما هناك 
أي تواصل مني مع قناة الجزيرة أو تصريح مني إلى قناة الجزيرة وحتى المادة التي سجلت أصلا ما كان مقصد منها أن تصل إلى قناة الجزيرة وما ما لي أي علاقة فيهم وما كان يعني مني أي تواصل مع قناة الجزيرة بالنسبة حق موقع التسجيل طبعا حصل في مملكة البحرين في عام 2011 وتحديدا في مدينة حمد في منزل الأخ هشام البلوشي وجمال البلوشي في حضور الأخوة أنا حاضر جمال الأخ جمال البلوشي الأخ هشام البلوشي الأخ محي الدين خان والأخ بسام العلي وحصل طبعا اتفاق في موضوع تسجيل هذه المادة لتشكيل ورقة ضغط على الجهات الأمنية حتى لا نتعرض مرة ثانية إلى ضغوطات أو محاولة قبض مرة ثانية حصل بعد قبض علينا ومحاكمتنا في عام 2004 هذا السبب من تسجيل الفيديو وما في أي أسباب أخرى اللي قاعد تذكره قناة الجزيرة وقحمت هذا التسجيل ووظفت لوظائف أخرى بالنسبة عن موضوع تكليف باختيالات أو جلب أسلحة المملكة العربية السعودية فما هناك أي تكليف والموضوع عاري عن الصحة وسبب ذكر هذه التكليف أو جلب الأسلحة لإضفاء قوة على إعلامية على الموضوع وتشكيل وزن وحجم للموضوع وكذلك ذكر اسماء الضباط كان السبب يعني معرفتي باسمائهم حصل ان استدعاء وتحقيق معي بهذا السبب ذكرت اسمائهم سجل طبعا المنتج على سيديات كنت انا امتلك سي دي الاخ محي الدين خان والاخ بسام العلي حصل طبعا مثل ما انصدمنا وتفاجأنا قبل ايام انه عرض وسرب هذا الموضوع الى قطر وما سرب الى قطر الا بمبلغ مالي بسأل الله ان يحفظ البحرين ومملكة البحرين وقيادة البحرين وان ينعم علينا رب العالمين ان شاء الله بنعمة الامن والامان والثبات والتجمع حول قادة البحرين باذن الله تعالى التقرير اللي نشر في الجزيرة مقاطع الفيديو مقاطع الفيديو أنا شفتها سابقا وفي التقرير ناشرينها كلها مقطعة على أساس أن يوصلون للهدف اللي هما يبونه والفيديو اللي أخوي تكلم فيها عن الأجهزة الأمنية ومحمد صالح يتكلم عن الأجهزة الأمنية هاي الفيديو سجل في بيتنا في المجلس وأنا كنت موجود ومحي الدين كان موجود وبسام كان موجود وهم اتفقوا مسبقا انهم يفبركون التسجيلات على اساس انه يكون لها وزن ثقيل اعلاميا للضغوطات على الحكومه البحرينيه او الاجهزه الامنيه من خلال المنظمات الحقوقيه فلما خلصوا التسجيل مشوا وانا سالت اخوي قلت له ليش سجلت تسجيل فيديو وانت تتكلم عن الاجهزه الامنيه ومحمد صالح يتكلم عن الاجهزه الامنيه ومحمد صالح يذكر انه كلف بالقيام لعمليات اغتيال يعني هذه امور غير صحيحه قال لي نعم اخي هاي غير صحيح علاقه اخوي بالاجهزه الامنيه علاقه جيده الاجهزه الامنيه ما قصروا مع اخوي ودائما كانوا يساعدونه ودائما كانوا ينصحونه حتى أنا شخصياً كذا مرة شفت أفراد من الأجهزة الأمنية كانوا يقولون لي أنصح أخوك فقلت لهم أنا أنا أنصح الوالدة تنصح البيت ينصحونه الكل ينصح بس هو الفكر الجهادي معشش في مخه حبيت أشهد شهادة أنا على علم بها وحاضرها للفيلم اللي انشرته الجزيرة حضرت المجلس نفسه اللي نشر فيه الفيلم أنه تم تصوير محمد صالح الشيخ محمد صالح في اقوال معينه ذكرها بالفيلم والشيخ هشام بلوشي ذكر بعض الاقوال حصل شهاده اني انا حاضر هالمجلس ذي واذكر ما شهدته في المجلس 
ما عجبني الوضع في وقتها اجتهدت انه يمسح الفيلم وتنلغي العمليه كلها نهائيا ما نجحت في الموضوع ذي ولكن نجحت ان اخذ منهم وعود بعدم النشر تحت اي ظرف من الظروف وما يستخدم لاي غرض كان وكانه لم يكن فهذه اللي انا اشهد به وهذه اللي انا حضرته وهذه تسجيلات صوتيه تكشف التواصل بين مسؤولين قطريين والمدعو محي الدين محمود خان أحد أعضاء هذه المجموعة والهارب في تركيا وذلك بهدف الترتيب للحصول على اللجوء السياسي وكذلك التواصل مع قناة الجزيرة في أخوة تواصلوا معايا من قطر فلما حولي يعني عرض علي أنهم عندهم الآن نظام جديد في قطر طلعوه حق اللجوء السياسي فلما حولي أنه هل نكلم الحكومه يعني نرتب لك ترتيب بحيث انك انت تجي اذا صار شيء مثلا هنا ضيقت يعني في تركيا انك تجي مباشره هناك وتقدم اللجوء في مطار فقالوا هذه في امكانيه يعني وزي ما قلت لك انا كلمت بعض الاخوه هناك اروح للسفاره القطريه في انقره واقدم على اللجوء السياسي وانتظر منهم رد وفي واحد بكره بجلس معاه بيكلم واحد يصير خال الشيخ تميم يعني والمعلوماتك ايضا بعد الى الان الجزيره قاعد يحاولون يتواصلون معايا ان لغه التحريض واثاره الفتنه والتي تتبعها قناه الجزيره القطريه تنطلق من منهج دوله قطر في دعم وتمويل الارهاب The people of Bahrain will always remain united and loyal to the leadership of His Majesty the King. The Sheikh Ad-Dosiri family in Bahrain and in Dammam, Sheikh Abdul Rahman bin Ahmed bin Abdullah Ad-Dosiri, affirmed the family's continuous support to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. He asserted that Bahrain, led by His Majesty the King, is stronger and more united and cohesive, and that the conspiracies and the rogue state are forcefully rejected and is considered an unethical practice. He stated that the Qatari Al Jazeera channel's program is part of a series of the Qatari terrorism, which affirms the accuracy of the boycotting decision made by Bahrain, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and Egypt to stop terrorist practices in all its forms. Adosari noted that the Bahraini people are unaffected by malicious conspiracies for their full awareness about the fabrications of the Qatari regime against the GCC countries and their people. Bahrain has made numerous accomplishments in various fields, especially in sports, with the support of the first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa. MMA athletes in the kingdom continue to thrive. Bahrain IMMAF medalist Hussein Iron Ayad is set to fight the, the coming Brave Championship later this month in London. More in this report. Hussein Iron Ayad became known in the mixed martial arts world for his performances in the amateur scene, where he took the flag of Bahrain to the highest place in several competitions, also earning a bronze medal in the first edition of the IMMAF World Championships to take place in the kingdom. After hard work and dedication, Hussein Ayad has become the first Bahraini to become a medalist in IMMAF World Championships and moving from being an amateur to a professional. Hussein, he's a talented guy and it always depends on opponent. If we first we watch opponent fights, videos, then we decide what tactics will be good for his opponent. You know, and uh, for example, now his opponent, opponent is more about striking and uh, we are planning to use more wrestling and uh, uh, top position, domination position on the ground and fi finish fight uh, on the top and to be always uh, dominating in this fight uh, with the wrestling and grappling. This is a plan for this fight. Previous fight was different. We, he was uh, training his striking to beat opponent in the uh, striking uh, game so it always depends on opponent and the good side of Hussein he he is good everywhere like uh, if I tell him go for takedown he will go for takedown if I tell him 
use your boxing or uh, uh, kicks, he will do that. And uh, jiu-jitsu as well, he has a good jiu-jitsu, so uh, that's why he's one of the best in our team. Later this month, and specifically on July 25th, Ayad will take on Mitchell Johnson, who makes his brave debut inside his home country. Hussain is coming off two straight victories for the promotion, taking out Mohammed Abu Ali by technical knockout at last year's Brave 18 and beat Jason Vergara by submission at Brave 22, which took place in the Philippines. About my next fight in London, this very, like, from the most important fight for me, I'm training very hard for it. Like, I feel more than the rest of my fights because uh, we'll be in Europe and a lot of important people as well will be there. And for me, I take all the fights is important, but this one I'm giving more, more attention, like I'm more training, like as much as I can. Uh, especially uh, His Highness will be there and uh, all my coaches will be there. And this uh, like make me just go harder to show them like uh, what they give me, like I deserve what they give me. And uh, inshallah I will make all the country and all the people like they love me, that's proud of me. The event is held with the main focus to empower the sport of MMA in the region and set to break milestones for the sport and change the entire world's perception of the sports to a much higher level. Hussein Iron Ayad continues to work hard in preparation for the fight and we are all rooting for him and Bahrain. The fifth edition of President of Bahrain Basketball Association, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa Voluntary Work Award, continues to disseminate and promote a culture of volunteering and stimulate creative initiatives in Bahrain. More on this report with Abdul Ghaffar. In its fifth edition, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa's award for voluntary work spreads the culture of volunteerism and highlights its role in the overall development of the community in Bahrain and honors pioneers of voluntary work. It's an honorary award presented to the best volunteer project in the Kingdom of Bahrain where we aspire to strengthen both the ideas of volunteerism and the arts of giving. And that is by raising, uh, uh, raising awareness in the society about the significance of voluntary work and how it contributes to the uplifting of the society as a whole. Not to learn the youth today, we also aspire to raise the youth today with very enlightened mindsets where these traits such as caring for the less fortunate are indulged within their cores and shapes their character and who they are. Especially knowing that the youth today are the ones who are going to reflect a positive image about Bahrain to the outside world. Bahrain welcomes foreigners and expats with open arms, so as the award that allows expats to apply and fairly compete. We are a non-discriminative, non-racist community where we lived in harmony with non-Bahrainis, we currently do and will continue to live with, in harmony with them in the future. And that is part of our beloved King, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's vision that we all happily follow. Plus, non-Bahrainis make up a big portion of the society today where uh, therefore this idea came to emphasize first that we are a strong United Nation and secondarily to highlight all the great work that foreigner, uh, voluntary work that foreigners lead. Everyone meeting the unbiased competition's criteria can participate and join the journey of development through voluntary work. As for the criteria, uh, they only have to participate in one project. The project must be materialized or tangible. It, it can't be just a mere idea. Uh, they need to mention uh, if there are any sponsorships that sponsor, sponsor their uh, project and they need to mention if there are any partners. For example, two organizations come together and work on one project. If this is the case, they need to mention it. They need to even have financial stability. So is the project uh, financially stable or um, or it uh, depends on donations or other uh, sources of uh, finance. Since 2015, the award raises awareness and deepens communication to bequeath the love of volunteer work. Uh, in the year 2015, we initially started with only 14 projects, and as for now, we have more than 50 projects registered in the competition. So this is, this is definitely a positive sign that people are more aware about how crucial voluntary work is uh, to, to our community as a whole. And um, you know, the, the, the thing that makes me happy and very uh, honored is that all of the projects that participated previously still continue to bloom. The award aims to support the development goals and programs of Bahrain's Reform Project and Vision 2030. 
Volunteers don't necessarily have the time, but they have the hearts. In its fifth edition, the Sheikh Isa bin Ali Award supports good hearts in Bahrain, not necessarily citizens, but also expats. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffar.